Ever eaten something before and thought, whoa, this is crazy good. What is it? When I was a kid, my dad grilled up a rack of lamb with simple spices and herbs and sliced them up into little individual bones. I remember when I took that first bite, I had never had flavors like this before, but I knew I loved it. That's why it's always gonna be ingrained in my memory. Well, I wanna recreate that dish with my own tweaks, of course, maybe add a little sauce to the top. And my friends over at the American Lamb Board are going to help us get there. But first, we're gonna knock out a little prep with that marinade. Sound good? Let's cook. So when my dad grilled up that rack of lamb, all he did was just rub it down with some spices and herbs and put it right on the grill. Well, I wanna maximize the flavor, so I think marinating that is gonna be the best option. One tablespoon of coriander seeds, two teaspoons of cumin seeds, and a half cinnamon stick. Taking this pan right over to the cooktop, going to crank the heat down to low. What we wanna do is cook this for about five to seven minutes while occasionally stirring it to bring out some aromatics, which will make the flavors of this more intense. This is great timing though, because we can prep up our fresh herbs. I have several sprigs of fresh oregano and fresh thyme. I'm gonna roll it up and finely mince it. I want about three tablespoons total of fresh chopped herbs. If you don't have access to these fresh herbs, you can substitute in one for one dry oregano and dry thyme. After this quick run through, I'm gonna go back, give the pan a quick stir. You can see some things starting to turn a little brown. This is great. Going back over to the herbs, giving it a once over. Then I'm gonna transfer all of these right to a large bowl. Let's go back to the pan and have a look. I highly recommend stick your face in there and smell it. The flavors are incredible. You can start to see that the coriander are nice and brown. This is great. Let's transfer this right over to a mortar. Then I have a pestle and what I'm gonna do is finally ground these down. Now, if you don't have a mortar and pestle, a spice grinder will also work as well. Grind these down as fine as you can. It's okay if there are a few little chunks in there like the cinnamon stick, no problem. But we do want them to be pretty fine. The finer they are, the more they'll penetrate our meat when marinating. Let's transfer the spices over to the bowl with the fresh herbs. I'm gonna add in one teaspoon of paprika, followed up with five to six large garlic cloves. I'm gonna finely grate these in there. Now, if you love garlic, maybe add a few extra. If you don't, maybe just use one or two garlic cloves. You be the judge. Then I'm going to zest in one lemon. It's gonna bring some nice citrus flavors over. Then I'm gonna slice that lemon in half. Then I wanna extract the juice from it. I just put my other hand in place just to catch any seeds. And miraculously, no seeds in this one. Amazing. Now I'm gonna add in one cup of extra virgin olive oil followed up with two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. You could use white distilled as well. Then one and a half tablespoons of coarse salt and fresh cracked pepper. I know that's a lot of salt. I'll explain here in a second. Grab a whisk, mix everything together until it is completely combined. Once it is there, grab a spoon, get in there and try it out. All right, a couple of really quick things here. Marinade should be over the top flavorful. You're not consuming the marinade directly. No, you're consuming whatever is being marinated and it needs to penetrate that protein so that it is extremely tasty. It's so important to learn how to properly season. If I just give you this recipe, that doesn't teach you how to cook. No, making sure you understand the techniques is how you get there and seasoning is a big deal. So if this needs more salt or more pepper, put it in there. And look, if you're getting to the point where you're thinking, that's a lot of different things to add in a marinade. Here's the really quick scaled back version. Cumin, coriander, red wine vinegar, olive oil, garlic, and of course salt and pepper would be a fantastic marinade. All right, let's bring out the hero. I've got two racks of genuine American lamb. This is one of my all time favorite cuts of lamb, favorite cuts of meat in general. It has eight total bones. This comes from the rib of the lamb. It's lean, it also has a nice fat cap on top, which helps protect it when cooking, and renders down and flavors up the lamb. Love this cut. What I'm gonna do is transfer it right over to the cutting board, and I'm going to cut these into two bone pieces. Now you can cut these down into one bone slices, but here's my reasoning for two bones. When you grill it up, that extra bone gives it protection so that it does not overcook. That's why to me, two bones is best. It will stay juicier, it will stay tender, and you'll have the exact internal temperature that you like. Obviously, while doing this, 
you just go over two bones, slice down until you completely cut through. Once they are sliced, I'm taking it over to that large bowl with my marinade. Then I'm gonna mix the lamb completely. Take a couple seconds to do this. You wanna coat it on all sides. At this stage, you could wrap the bowl and put it in the refrigerator marinade. For me, I usually use a plastic zip bag and scrape all of the ingredients in there. I just wanna make sure all of it's completely covered while marinating. I usually just give it a quick mix once it's in there, then over to the refrigerator to marinate. And to my comies, my chefs in training out there, what's that old saying? Anything worth doing takes time. And the same thing goes with marinating. You need to give these 24 to 48 hours for maximum flavor. If you're in a crunch, maybe you could squeeze out 12 hours, but the closer you get to that 48 hour mark, the better. So plan ahead when making this. Now, I don't think it needs it because the lamb by itself is going to be incredibly delicious, but there's a really cool sweeter mint sauce that you can put on top. It looks beautiful. It complements very well. Here is how you do it. I've got a large bunch of fresh mint. I'm looking for about a half cup finely minced in the end. But you do need to remove some of the stems. The larger, thicker end pieces are not going to be good in here. The young, tender, thin pieces are going to be fantastic. Again, there's so much flavor in stems of herbs. Do not be afraid to use them. Roll all that mint up. To me, it's easier to do that while trying to finely mince in the other hand. Once you get to this consistency, we're in good shape. Let's transfer this over to a medium-sized bowl. Then what I'm going to do is season it with a pinch of coarse salt, two tablespoons of white distilled vinegar. You could use cider vinegar or sherry vinegar. Then three tablespoons of honey. Now, classically, this recipe would have sugar or brown sugar in it. I think honey complements it way better, and it's going to be even more complimentary when we add it with the lamb. Next, we're going to add in three to four tablespoons of hot boiling water. Mix it in there. This will help give it that saucy consistency we're looking for and help blend in the honey so it's not thick. This looks awesome. Be sure to try it out. Set it to the side. Then on that zero hour when we're ready to cook the lamb, let's take it out of the refrigerator. Just put it on the countertop. In the meantime, we're going to preheat a grill to high heat that's in between 500 and 550 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it is preheated and ready to go, maybe five to 10 minutes, let's add the lamb right onto the grill. We are going to cook this for three minutes per side. I like a medium rare internal temperature. I mean all sides, the top, the bottom, flip it over and get both the sides as well. So 12 minutes total. But the only way to be sure is to use a thermometer. Once I'm to that 115 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature, I know I'm good. So I'm gonna start pulling all the lamb off and let it rest for three to five minutes. I know one thing, it smells ridiculous in here. Techniques, techniques, techniques. When you put them into practice over and over again, my promise to you is that it will absolutely elevate your everyday cooking. Now this lamb would go fantastic with a side of my pan fried potatoes. Pretty classic to serve up with lamb. You can check out that recipe on my website. But for now, I'm gonna show you how I plate these up. I like to add a few thick lemon slices right to that grill just for maybe a minute or two per side. Gives it that nice char on there and actually intensifies the flavor a lot more. For plating up, add the lamb to a plate, bones going in one direction, meat at the other end, add in those lime slices, then generously drizzle on that mint sauce all over the place. Do not skimp on this. I promise you, you'll regret it. Then you can optionally garnish with some more fresh chopped mint and fresh thyme and oregano like in the marinade. Then let's have a quick slice in the middle. Boom, beautiful, medium, rare. Such awesome flavors. It just brings me right back to the dinner table where I got to try this for the first time so many years ago. So good. Huge thanks to the American Lamb Board for partnering with me on this recipe video. And if you love this, you will love my Greek style braised lamb. Oh, that one is incredible. Got a great recipe video. I'll see you on there.